we have now negotiated a new contract and Nike Australia were given direction from global that yeah budget cuts had to happen everywhere and they kind of made offers to everyone and we were given the option to look around and Puma Global uh, reached out and so now our contract's coming out of France. Yeah. So how, how does that compare then for like, say a professional runner, professional track and field athlete then? So you mentioned like salaries are higher or whatever, minimum wage is higher in Australia. Is that similar for track and field where like if you're Australian sponsored? Cause I thought it was the opposite. I thought if you're- it's the opposite. opposite. So that's the okay. you know ironic thing. We, everything is much more expensive here. So job, you know, every other job here. Uh, pays more than you would they would pay in America, for example. But track and field is such a low profile sport here. It's it will never well it hasn't been for years now on television. Like our Olympic trials aren't on television. Um, but say our swimming is. So yeah, our, our swimming, swimming is massive. because we get medal like we get a lot of medals in swimming. So it has higher government funding. There's probably bigger profile. Um, the athletes are more well known. So our contracts in Australia, if they're coming from an Australian uh, brand, they're extremely low. Like you wouldn't believe some of the stars that you've heard of and how like little they're paid. This is maybe a bit controversial, but we have a problem in Australia where we um, give the opportunities to maybe our best performing athlete, but that best performing athlete might be in a technical, non-popular event. Mm -hmm. Where really the ones that draw in the fans are the runners. Um, but because they, they mightn't be the ones getting the medals, um, they won't be the face of athletics in Australia. And I think that really hurts us. It's mm. kind of shooting us in the foot because we're the, the marquee athletes for the Australian Athletics Championships are, are relatively unknown athletes. Mm. And if that's the ad advertisement for tell, tell people to come and that they've never seen these athletes before, even though, you know, they might be medalists in, in just like, Technical, Le events. technical less profile events i think that hurts us where we've got so many good storylines in the in the main events like we've we've, we've got we've got a hundred meter runner right now rowan browning who's ran 1005 and um you know that's massive for an australian sure. guy to do that yeah. and it's an incredible storyline but you know he he rarely gets a look in because um yeah, he's, well, he's not going to win a medal. Even being know. more biased because he's in our training group, like Stewie, he's on the circuit front running 330 or 31. Like mm -hmm. it's just insane what he's doing, but he's not even a pinup guy here drawing in crowds. You know, yeah. he's not he's used because he hasn't medal. In the US. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we kind of do the opposite. We don't give like any attention people would probably argue that we don't give enough attention to the the field and technical events here. Oh, yeah. And we give all the attention to the, to the sprinters and to the milers are kind of like the two, yeah. the two groups. I wish we had that model because if, if Stewie, yeah. you know, was able to just get a bronze medal in Doha world champs in the pole vault, um, <laughs> he, you know, he would be, the, yeah. the federation would use him as a, as a pinup boy. It but, comes from yeah. government funding. If you get medals, that's where the money goes to. Um, if you're not getting the medals as a runner, the money doesn't go there. So that means the attention can't go there. It needs to go where the money is being created and that's getting medals. Right. right. That's right. Yeah. That's interesting. Yep. Cause like, I feel like one of the bigger shifts in the U S is that it's not that it's like fully tied to like how popular you are, like how much you can push a brand, but it, it definitely plays a factor aside from performance. Yeah. Social media is definitely a, a growing thing in the U S for sure. And, and we, I mean, we've seen lately that some, some people that wouldn't have been a professional runner coming out of college a couple of years ago or five years ago, maybe they're able to, because they have a huge Instagram following or YouTube following. Yeah. And so we're definitely trending towards that. And I guess you, you both would be perfect examples of, uh, like having that social following internationally and, mm -hmm. I'm curious then now, like thinking about this. So how, have you been approached or what are the restrictions around like, so you're getting sponsored by Nike, but it's specifically in Australia. Like what, why is there not an opportunity for it to be broader than that? I guess like a company outside the Australia to approach you or like, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm total like naive. Don't under, don't know how all this works behind the scenes. And I'm sure like Nike Australia is a separate operating group from Nike US and yeah. all of that. But I'm just curious how that works from a sponsorship perspective, especially with the following that you have that you 
could maybe get some other sponsor deal. Um, mm-hmm. whether, even if it's not a running shoe company. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, we're not with Nike anymore. We're in negotiations with someone else. So that will come out very shortly. We haven't released it though yet. Okay. okay. That actually falls perfectly with what you're saying. Nike Australia completely hamstrung when it comes to, you know, where they can de- delegate their money to. They have taken us on for the last four years, but previously to that, Ryan was with the, I was with New Balance US. Yeah. Um, maybe that was because I was out of college and for those next four years, it was an Olympic cycle to 2016. I was looked after by the New Balance US team, which was awesome. Like I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, they looked after me so well. And I think, uh, yeah, I got to experience the difference of like, um, I don't know. I just feel like it was easier to get gear and stuff, but I was coming out of college. So I was naive to it all anyway. And Ryan was with Nike US, like all this contract was done in US dollars and everything. Okay. But from 2016 onwards, um, people like me, Pat Tienan, um, Ryan, and there's probably a few others. We were Nike Australia. Um, and they kind of sponsored our group. They were, we were an MTC Nike group and that was an Australian budget which I don't know if that's been done much before, but that was just coming out of Australia. And so now December, 2020, our contracts were all up, um, except for a few people like Stewie, I think, and maybe Rambo. Um, We have now negotiated a new contract and Nike Australia were given direction from global that, yeah, budget cuts had to happen everywhere. And they kind of made offers to everyone and we were given the option to, look around and Puma Global uh, reached out. And so now our contract's coming out of France. Uh, oh, so okay. it's kind of what you were saying. Yeah. Australia, Australia Puma don't have a distance athlete budget at all. They don't sponsor Just distance local, athletes. Local football. They do local football, jersey, um, that type of stuff. Maybe some netball. You guys probably don't even know what netball is. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so now we're technically uh, from Puma Global which is cool. It's exciting for us because yeah, it's a bigger, it's a bigger operation. Yeah, so you know, right, there's a little right. bit more of a budget. They, they're going to treat us like some Europeans get treated, which is, you know, a lot better because in Australia, I think we get forgotten about down here. Um, so it's really exciting for us. Um, we, we're kind of doing this next chapter together with a new brand. This is the first time Ryan has branched out for 12 years. He's been a Nike boy. Um, so it's exciting. Like, I'm like very, I'm like princess in the pea when it comes to shoes. You know, I need to like try every single thing out and like pick yeah. the exact thing I want. Whereas Ryan, who's been with the brand for 12 years, can just put, find a Puma shoe, put it on and be like, yep, I love it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so I, they'll probably get really sick of me fast. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that's awesome. That uh, It seems like Puma's investing a lot in, uh, in athletics and track and field. Uh, similarly, like Molly Seidel, the yep. good marathoner in the U.S. signed with them and, uh, that's at the time that kind of seemed like it came out of left field. It was like, yeah. Whoa, wait, what yeah. they have, they sponsor distance runners really. Yeah. Like, cause you always see them with like Usain Bolt, obviously, and <laughs> a bunch of, uh, soccer teams and all of that. But it was, it's less, it was less common at least, uh, for distance runners. Uh, I really felt, so yeah, it felt like they took, they started investing like in the middle of COVID because yeah. contracts were like getting dropped at good Aisha, time to Aisha buy, went yeah. uh, back to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She did well. So I think it's from what I've heard um, over COVID, a lot of brands have realized, okay, in a global pandemic, not that we're preparing for another one anytime soon, but what remains constant and it's that people's health and exercising and getting out and running out the door is always going to be something that happens till the day we die. It's that will never be stopped by a global pandemic unless you're literally locked inside. Um, so investing in other sports or in um, field events, they realize that, or sprinting even, they realize distance running deserves to be the marketable sport because everyone runs. Like we have, uh, everyone has park run, um, road races, marathon training, like everyone loves marathons. And I think that's where brands have thought, that's where we need to be sending money because, um, yeah, that's, you can always sell a shoe for a runner. Whereas yeah, you can't track, necessarily tracks are shut. It's hard to yeah. You can't go sell a you know, Usain spike. Bolt spike. <laughs> you know, and they go outside and start sprinting. Like it just doesn't work that way. So it's definitely been um, a cool 
journey to be a part of because I do think they're going to make massive inroads from here on um, in the distance department. But Ryan said he's most, well, both of our most searched athletes on Instagram right now are, yeah, Aisha, um, Giza Kraus and Molly Sardell who have yeah, just been, yeah. like, going on there because we haven't been able to tell anyone, but we've been yeah. going on their profiles and, like, looking at the shoe they're using and checking yeah. out their spikes and being like, hey, which one should we get? Yeah. Um, yeah, we're spying on people. Their their That's gear great. has gotten so much better. I think everyone's catching up. Brands are catching up. I think Nike obviously have led the charge, but you can't afford in this day and age to be lacking in shoe technology because you just won't get a look in and um i know that's puma's plan this year is to really develop their shoes so that come next year they're you know as as good as anyone out there right and it's so true what you said about the pandemic showing how important distance running is that's the mm-hmm. same in the u.s that was the as all the gyms closed everyone realized mm-hmm. the only exercise yeah. you can get is to go out for a yeah. job and so exactly. all all the running stores here even though they weren't open to like physically go into, you could still order online and pick stuff up. They were all selling yeah. more shoes than they've ever sold before. Yeah. Even though they yeah. weren't open, it was, it was so weird. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it'll still- absolutely be a sport that, that it just, I probably only continues to grow just cause it's so easy. It's so accessible. You just, for a hundred dollars, you get a pair of shoes and you can run for a few months and be healthy. So yeah, no, I think that's a, uh, it's a great point. And I think, I think a lot of brands are realizing that now.